Mullen, a top 10 showdown, and that's just the start of it in Big East Hoops. We're only about a quarter of the way through conference play, Jay Alter, and we are running on Big East Shootaround. A lot of fun this week in particular. We got out on the road this week in conference play. It's a lot of fun. I was at the Garden, you in Omaha, and then last night for the top 10 showdown, and I'll tell you what, these teams fired up and the intensity in the buildings and the atmospheres has been fantastic. We combine all those things into just two minutes. Let's get to it right here. The fastest two minutes in Big East Hoop from this past week. We start with Patrick Ewing returning home. Yes, number 33 hanging in the rafters. You can see it right over his shoulder. Fist bumps on his way in and then chills for this moment. At center court before the game, a reunion of two Big East legends. And another goat in the stands. <laughs> awesome. And then it turned to the game. This one back and forth all night long. Then Jesse Govan. We're driving in the Govan in New York City as Georgetown gets their second Big East win. That's a big win for the Hoyas. A bigger win for the Providence Friars with number five Xavier at the dunk. Kyron Cartwright. And then here's your exclamation point. Rodney oh. Bullock. Bullock was great all afternoon. This is a huge win for the Friars NCAA tournament hopes. It will go a long way all the way to Selection Sunday. Ed Cooley, wow, after a loss to Marquette, pulled the rabbit out of the hat, big time. DePaul, bank open for the Blue Demons on Woo! the road. And I love this win for Dave Lato and company, building confidence there in Chicago, getting that road win against St. John's. Kyrie ridiculous! <laughs> That might be the dunk of the year thus far from Kyrie Thomas. We'll remember that for the top five plays next week. Uh-oh, that door was left open. And Marcus Foster came getting the cookies. This was a wire-to-wire -wire win for the Blue Jays. The Crumb K Crumple. He is playing at a high level. How about Marquette? 20 point win against number 13 Seton Hall. Statement win for Coach Wojo and company. Yeah, just another one of those statement wins from the unranked Big East teams. They're proving themselves. Oh, Pascal, heads up. Oh, man. Number one Villanova Jay flexing their muscles last night. Showed why. They're the best team in the country. When you play like this, they're going to be tough to be beat. Phil Booth, that was one of his five triples on the night. And, whoo, top 10 matchup. Everyone was saying this is going to be a great test for Villanova, and boy, Jay Wright and the Wildcats just keep on moving on. 20-plus point win at home. It's a Xavier team that a lot of people think can get all the way to the Final Four. It's a Xavier team that's going to be A-OK. -okay. But what's the takeaway last night? Number one Villanova in a top-10 showdown doing that. Right, and everybody can react to the games in different ways, but I say, yes, this is Xavier losing two games in a row, but it's more a statement to Villanova. This Wildcats team just handled a veteran group, a group that went to the Elite Eight with Trayvon Blewett, with J.P. Mercura, and they shut them down. J.P. Mercura, there are... Very few games where he goes unnoticed in this conference, and Villanova took him out of the game and played really well on the defensive end, which is something Jay Wright wanted to focus on coming into this week after that loss to Butler. His players heard about focusing on the defensive end, and that was the story all night long. That defense of Villanova's return, Mikhail Bridges and Jalen Brunson brought it up too. I'm now joined by Villanova's Mikhail Bridges after a dominant performance by the Wildcats and their win over Xavier. Mikhail, what was behind such a hot start tonight? Uh, defense, you know, we came in and practice for the past couple of days and knowing that we had a defending rebound and us just going up defending, you know, our offense will come, but us defending was the main thing and that's what we keyed on and we did a great job of that tonight. You guys have been at the top of the Big East, season in, season out. How much is that thought there when you welcome in a top 10 Xavier team that's on the pursuit for that crown as well? Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're real good, you know, and really well coached. So, you know, it's great. You know, Big East, I feel like it's, you know, the best conference in, you know, college basketball right now. And so every game you play against is a big game. So you can't lose one because, you know, the next team will go up on you. So, you know, just coming to doubt in, you know, on the personnel and just defending was the main thing. Phil Booth, in the preseason, we really weren't sure, collectively, you guys, Coach Wright, everybody else, on what his status would be throughout the season. Has this even exceeded your expectations, just how good he's been this soon? Yeah, he's, he's playing real well, and you could tell, like, maybe weeks ago, 
maybe a month ago that he was back and you know he's his knees 100 percent and he got back in the groove so it's good to see him back playing and you know he got even better from you know last year and the year before so it's just he's gonna keep getting better and him getting better is gonna make us better is this your best performance of the season to date most definitely you know we the way we defend it is how we should defend, and we're going to you know, learn off this and just keep getting better and better. I'm now alongside Villanova's Jalen Brunson after the Wildcats roll past Xavier. Jalen, Coach Chris Mack of the Musketeers said that if you pulled your face off, there'd be a bunch of wires behind it because you're a robot. <laughs> is that true? Yeah. <laughs> nah. Um, I mean, I'm just, I, don't, I honestly don't know what to say about that. Robot or not, I mean, you were just on tonight throughout the entire way. What exactly went right from the get-go? I think uh, we were really connected defensively. We, um, we were able to make shots as well. But um, even if this game was a close game, I think uh, the way we were playing defensively, we, were, we would have been able to come out with a win by a one possession, two possession game. How exactly do you stop J.P. McCure and Trayvon Blewett? Uh, you just hope to contain them, honestly. Uh, I think that we did a, a decent job of just, you know, just playing together and not letting them get easy looks. Um, I mean, they're, they're great players, and it's something that, I mean, most teams can't do. I mean, we were just fortunate enough that they didn't make shots tonight and we were playing together. I saw you and Mikhail Bridges sharing a laugh in the press room. Everyone always mm -hmm. thinks about Villanova. Mm -hmm. Like Jay Wright said, or rather Chris Mack said, you're a robot. Mm -hmm. Can you explain to me, though, there's personality to what you guys do, and what is that? Yeah, I, th I think um, our team's just a great group of guys. Um, we enjoy each other's company. We are, we're all really good friends, and there's no cliques within the team. It's all about us. It's all about us being together, and I think that chemistry off the court definitely helps us on the court. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Statement making W by the Wildcats against a very good Xavier team. But last night, Villanova showed why they have taken the last four Big East regular season crowns as they keep on rolling. They're at St. John's inside the world's most famous arena Saturday night. But uh, we got something else going on. We do. Steve Lavin, well, he's just appointment television every time he's on the screen for Fox Sports. But he was out in Omaha with this guy for <laughs> dollar beer night. And, uh, well, why don't you just take a look? Great history, great tradition, great fans. And, of course, dollar beer night. Beer nights. More dollar beer night. nights. They're going to have to break out the dollar <laughs> beer nights in Omaha. Well, Lab will be happy to know that there's a little extra buzz in the building when it's dollar beer night in Century Lane. I can go to beer nights. I'm considering That's... taking a jet, flying in, just to make an appearance. <laughs> Well, and that he did. He went to beer night, and now it's a new tradition in Omaha. Oh, he's got the shirt cannon. Watch, Watch out. out. <laughs> and that's after a couple. <laughs> I mean, I was concerned for the folks a little bit, because at one point he was pointing it like this, and uh, Joe Willman from Creighton Athletics said, Coach, sky high. Sky high. What are you doing First here? First row, he, Coach. He went Boom. To, to, yeah, exactly. Take a head off. Right. Share the sugar. Share the T-shirts. <laughs> Coach we Lavin. love Coach Lav. Trending in Omaha. Somehow he went from Omaha on Tuesday night to Philadelphia last night, and tonight that crews out with the Pac-12 in Arizona. So a little Coach Pac-12 after dark. Absolutely. Good luck with the travels and keep on rolling. He's on a roll. And the Georgetown Hoyas on Tuesday night, you saw it in person, getting another win, Ewing and Mullen. What a showdown that was, and there's so many great sights and sounds. The nostalgia in the building, John, and being there with a lot of Georgetown and St. John's fans that came mm. out, and then this after the game with the legendary Lou Carnesecca coming up to Patrick Ewing at the age of 93 and saying, you always find a way to beat us, don't you? You know, ribbing each other a little bit, and uh, in good humor and good spirits is Coach Carnesecca. <laughs> And Patrick Ewing had a big smile on his face. You knew it meant a lot to him. And he told us it wasn't just because of Georgetown and St. John's. He's got a lot of good memories in that building from all his days playing with the Knicks and that number 33 hanging in the world's most famous arena rafters. So really special night uh, for Coach Ewing in both programs in this conference. His passion is infectious, and it's resulting in a roster really buying in to what he's putting down. This is a Georgetown team that, yeah, they've got a lot of questions, but I'll tell you what, the Hoyas showed a lot, and one of their biggest answers continues to be Jesse Goban, and Jay Alter was with him. 
Jesse, before the season started, you said this was the date circled on the calendar. You come into MSG on Coach Ewing's first game back as a head coach, and you get the win. How'd you make it happen down the stretch? Uh, you know, our guys just fought. You know, we're, we're a real scrappy group. Uh, you know, we, we was real excited. You know, we wanted to get a win for Coach Ewing in his first game back at the guard. You know, historic rivalry, Georgetown, St. John's. You know, and we made, uh, we made big plays down the stretch. So. What was the celebration like inside the Georgetown locker room, and did Coach Ewing say anything in particular to you guys? Oh yeah, it was big. Yeah, it was, it, you know, we were really excited. You know, we we definitely we didn't want to blow a lead. You know, again, like we have uh, so far this season. You know, and then Georgetown St. John's great rivalry, so we definitely wanted to come out here and get a win. And Coach Ewing was real happy about that too. You know, so uh, he had such a great career here at the Garden. You know, to sort of start his coaching career off at the Garden here with a, with a victory, that should be. I, f I think that feels uh, feels good for him. Well, Coach Ewing certainly has a lot of memories in this building and Jesse Govan the star player tonight you just added a big memory in this building yourself yeah. congratulations on the win and keep it going thank you appreciate that well Jesse Govan I'll tell you what you talk to coaches around the Big East and they are more than aware of what this kid is doing he is lighting it up and he really is the leader on and off the court for this Hoyas team and I think he should get some consideration when it comes to most improved in this conference as well as first and second team in this conference because if you look at his productivity in his first two seasons to now, he has really taken that leap from sophomore to junior year. And look, I don't think it's a coincidence. I think he's feeding off the energy and the passion and the knowledge that Patrick Ewing brings to Georgetown. That was a tough stage for Georgetown, too, because you're taking on a St. John's team that was trying to break through. And I think the Hoyas' defense is something to take away. Yeah, definitely, and that's something Patrick's really keyed in on. He goes, we don't have the offensive talent right now. If we're going to win games in this conference, we're going to win it with defense. They almost did it against Butler, came up just short at the end there, but they've now gone on and proven it against DePaul and St. John's. Who better to be stressing defense than Patrick Ewing as he went from Georgetown to making a living on just denying shots time and again. In the NBA, David West is our spotlight this week the former Xavier Musketeer with a milestone. What a career it has been for David West, and he's capped it off with a couple of NBA championships as well. I mean, a guy that, you, when you talk about grinders in the NBA, and he has played a thousand games, there are not many people to do that. I think he's now on a list of one of 125 players to reach a thousand in their career, incredible. That's amazing. We made it to the 21st shoot-around episode. Yeah. I just like to get to 100. We're legal. We can go to Omaha now for the shoot-around is old enough to enjoy dollar beer night. Got some Big East trivia for you, John. Okay. So David West went to the same high school as which current Xavier player? Wow. Hargrave Military Academy. Okay, and is it Najee Marshall? It's Najee Marshall. Wow. Put her okay, there. There we go. I was thinking Najee, Najee Marshall. Marshall. David West, and maybe one day we'll see Marshall in the association like David West. I can promise you they were not in my ear telling me the answer. I promise <laughs> you that. We will tell you when something's it's staged, true. And, and you can tell. No, that was authentic. The fall in the snow and the trivia. Yeah, those the are fall all... in the snow. By the way, I've gotten more people coming up to me this last week. I'm Is John fine. okay? Is he okay? He's fine. Here's the story, though. I was in Press Row in Omaha on Tuesday night, and I, I had a Creighton fan going, Hey! Hey, I'm talking to you. I turned around and said, hey, what's going on? They said, how you feeling? I said, my hip's fine. They said, fine? It doesn't look fine, and we could hear it all the way here from <laughs> Omaha. Creighton fans. You they were, were good. relentless. You bounced they right back They offered me up. a beer, so you know what? Hospitable, right. as always. All right, we were just talking about Xavier alum David West, and boy, do the Musketeers have a big battle coming. Coming off of two losses to Providence and Villanova, they're back home at the Cintas Center against Creighton. And John, the last time these two teams matched up, boy, it was electric inside Madison Square Garden. It was just last spring at the Big East Tournament semifinal. Gus Johnson, Jim Jackson on our Throwback Thursday. And he missed it. Chris Mack's strategy pays off. What do you do? 72-69. 25 best seconds shot available. to go. Best shot available. Here's the guy. He's got six threes. Blew it. Step back for the tie. Yeah! And we're level at 72. 14 seconds to go. Foster. Nine seconds for the win. Oh! 6.6 remaining. McCarroll, five seconds. McCarroll, 
Takes a three. Off the front rim now. And that's it. Marcus Foster. Seventy five seventy two Creighton advances to the championship game. Marcus Foster cold blood and he hit the big shot in that tournament semifinal. He had several big ones on Tuesday night as Creighton rolled past Butler. He had 21 first half points in the game and I caught up with him. Another night in the office for Creighton's Marcus Foster as he charges the Blue Jays past Butler. Marcus, explain to me what were you feeling in the first half? Um, you know, I'm just trying to let my game come to me a little bit, you know, get it going for my guys. You know, when I get going early, it makes it easier for my teammates because everybody else is so, so worried about me. But, you know, I hit a couple shots, got some transition buckets and got my teammates fired up. They were happy going into the locker room and then they carried us the way home. And this team's got a lot of balance to it. How does that happen? Um, I think we just work at our roles. You really accept the role you got to have. There's no you know, agenda with, the, with our teammates. Everybody's trying to do their job when we come out here and play. We always knew you were a bucket getter, and you did that again tonight. Is there a different way you've approached the game this season that's led you to take an even bigger leap? Oh, yes. With having the teammates I have that can shoot the ball, you know, I'm definitely looking for them. And, you know, with Martin playing the, as well as he is and jumping as high as he is on them lives, you know, I'm going to try to find them. And, you know, it's going to be kind of uh, it's going to be tough for me to score all the time, you know, so I'm going to have to set my teammates up so I can get my scoring going. What do you take with you into a Saturday showdown at number 10 Xavier? Uh, it's going to be 40 minutes of defense, you know, with Trayvon Blewett and J.P. Mercury. We're going to have to be able to contain those guys and get it done on defensive end, and offense will take care of itself. It normally does with the Blue Jays, doesn't it? Oh, it always does. <laughs> Congrats on the win. Thank you. Marcus Foster just lighting it up, and he's been one of the conference's standouts about a quarter of the way through, and that's what we have for At the Altar, don't we? Yeah, I put together a little uh, quarterly report here at the big board, John, and I know you might be thinking it's early, it's early, but when you think about it, 25% of this conference season is in the books, and we can start taking a little closer look inside the numbers, so let's get to it. And when the Big East stacks up against conferences across America, this is the oh, graph. Hi that stands out. Let's take a closer look at this. So this is really a graph on efficiency. So possessions per 40 minutes. Look at the Big East, folks. They're jumping off the page. You need to extend the graph. This is courtesy John Gassaway from ESPN. And look, ACC, typically a, a conference that is among the best Absolutely. year in and year out. They're hovering around one. The Big East is 1.12. It's incredible. This team, and look, and people want to say the Big East, that toughness factor usually defines the conference. And guess what? There is still toughness in this conference, maybe not like in the 1980s, but what this conference is doing, according to this graph, more than most conferences, is getting that high-octane offense, a style that you see like in the NBA, where the efficiency is high, the scoring numbers are up, and if you look at the way the Big East teams are playing in non-conference play and so far in conference play, you're really getting a high efficiency on the offensive end. Alter analytics here at the big board. Yeah, look, we're trying to incorporate numbers. I haven't were always been a numbers guy. Were you good in high school math? I'm a math guy. Definitely a math you guy. You are a math guy. Yeah, I'm a math guy. Little, little stat class up at Syracuse. Um, but yeah, offensive efficiency through the roof. All right. Here are numbers that are a little easier to digest, folks, here at the <laughs> altar. And I just want to make a quick point on the Blue Jays. Yes. This Creighton team, we both coming into this season in our preseason polls, did not have the Blue Jays in the top three. We thought it was a three-headed race with Villanova, Seton Hall, and Xavier. But the way this Creighton team has played a quarter through this conference schedule, they are absolutely in the conversation at the top of the conference, and they've got a big week coming up at the Cintas Center this Saturday and then in Omaha against Seton Hall. Here's the team that I'm liking. Yep. The Marquette Golden Eagles. That was a big time right win over Seton Hall. That's yep. a really good Seton Hall team that found a way at Hinkle Fieldhouse a week after Villanova, their one conference loss, their one loss overall, comes at Hinkle Fieldhouse. So I thought Seton Hall showed me a lot on Saturday in winning at Hinkle. 
but by the same token for Marquette to come out like that with a sense of urgency. And Kevin Willard was asked today on the Big East Coaches Conference call, what makes Howard and Rousey so tough to defend? He said Sam Hauser. He's a silent assassin in a lot of ways. So I like Marquette's pieces. They're even showing signs defensively that they're taking the next step. Jamal Kane's a freshman that's flying under the radar in this conference. And Marquette goes to Hinkle tomorrow. The way they're playing right now, I'll tell you, momentum's on their side, and they're in that five slot. It's going to be hard to take them out of that. I like the way Marquette's playing, and their non-conference, they took two or three in Maui, kept on going from there. They've got a tournament resume that's building. We're going to stick with the numbers and the analytics here at, at the altar as we move from the standings to the RPI. And look, Matt Norlander put out a great article last night. You should all check it out. That there are eight teams right now that could play their way into the NCAA tournament. And no fewer than six will be there on Selection Sunday. And when you look at the six, you got six teams inside the top 33 in the RPI. Folks, that's unheard of. Incredible that this conference is doing. More than half the conference is in the top 33 in the RPI. That factors strength of schedule, the way these teams are beating up on each other. And you just mentioned that Marquette team at number 33, John. I think you have to take them off the bubble and into the tournament right now, the way they're playing, especially after that Seton Hall win. It's loaded, the RPI. And Villanova showed last night their one loss to Butler again. It takes something abnormal to take down these Wildcats. Butler hit 15 threes, and that's not taking anything away from the Bulldogs. They went 15 for 22 from three, but that just shows you got to have some sort of a, a, a mirage, something that's out of the ordinary to take down these Wildcats as we continue. So we round out at the altar with the Wooden Award that was released today. Early, 25 players. Well, guess what? Five of them coming from the Big East Conference. Two from Villanova, Mikhail Bridges, Jalen Brunson, Seton Hall's Angel Delgado, Marcus Foster, and Trayvon Blewett. And when you look, 25 of the best players in the country, five of them are coming from the Big East. I think it speaks to those efficiency numbers we were talking about earlier, John. When you have scoring and great play, players are going to get recognized. And honestly, you could even include a Keelan Martin and a Marcus Howard into that group as well. I look at the Big East, and we knew this going into this season, of how experienced this conference is, Jay. And I'll tell you what, it has more than lived up to the hype with the stars in this conference. That's the thing about this league, is that it's deep with its teams, and there are players that you must see in the Big East tournament, all in one location, in Madison Square Garden, in March. You get some of college basketball's best players, multiple All-American guys, Multiple Wooden Award candidates. It is really, really something. At the altar. That was a lot of fun here as we take you to one last break, and we'll be back with more on Shoot Around. I still get the goosebumps even when I walked in today. We always talk about city swag. Just the excitement and the vibe. You can feel it the minute you get off the bus. It's Big East basketball. I think of toughness, standing your ground. That's what the Big East Tournament has always been about. The Big East Tournament during that week in March uh, becomes part of the heartbeat of New York City. Welcome back to This Week in the Big East. I'm John Rook with Kevin McNamara. He has that explosive offensive ability. This guy could be one of those true remarkable young stars. Prior head coach Ed Kula joins us. The league is as talented as it's been since the new configuration of the Big East. Junior guard Kadeem Carrington joined us. Last year was a, was a great stepping stone, but we, we just got to stay focused. One of the premier conferences in college basketball, the Big East Conference. They used to have an old thing. Now it's very much a new thing. Oh, the Big East is back, baby, and in a big way. Don't miss this week in the Big East. It'll be on tomorrow. Go to BigEast.com for more. It's on Westwood One. And tomorrow night, FS1, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Second game of Big East doubleheader. Commercial free, all access. Providence head coach Ed Cooley. DePaul head coach Dave Lato for the first time in NCAA men's basketball game. You will get both coaches mic'd up for the entirety of the way. We love our partners at Fox Sports and the way they're able to elevate how you watch a game, an awesome experiment, first of its kind. Don't miss it tomorrow night. Let's take a look at our upcoming schedule this weekend. A rare Friday with a Big East double header as Marquette takes on Butler, then Providence and DePaul in the all-access game. What else do you have your eyes on? 
well, look, you got to look at Creighton and Xavier. We've talked about it a lot. That's a top 25 battle in the Musketeers looking for a win after two losses. And then you have to have your eyes on Butler at Providence. Can the Friars keep it going after that win against Xavier? No doubt about it. The big Fox game, Creighton and Xavier top 25 showdown Saturday afternoon as we take you all the way through here on Shoot Around. We go to our Beyond the Game segment, and this is really cool what the Butler Bulldogs did last week. They welcomed in Seth Dennison, a seven-year-old boy, welcomed him onto their team. This is through the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, which helps pair up kids with brain tumors and other forms of cancer with sports teams. Well, Seth Dennison, now the Butler Bulldogs, they're the lucky ones. They have a brand new teammate, and that is Seth right there with his family. Laval Jordan felt like this was a great thing for his team and program to do. This is the Butler way going not only on the court but off the court. Great to see Seth. And Seth Dennison, welcome to the Butler Bulldogs. Proud that you're part of the Dogs family. You're proud of the Big East. You're rather part of the Big East family, too. Great to see that story in our Beyond the Game. We are back next week, 3 o'clock Eastern time. As you saw, a top 25 showdown this weekend between Creighton and Xavier at the Cintas Center. And then the all-access game, 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, Providence and DePaul. It's tomorrow night at Wintrust Arena. Do not miss it. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're just getting started in Big East Hoops play, but around a quarter through, partner... This has been a wild ride already. It has. Thanks for letting me crunch the numbers with you. Uh, we'll keep you posted on all the analytics. Uh, yeah, pop quiz next week. So be back 3 o'clock Thursday. I'm going to test you on all the numbers I ran through. Are we going to do a test on all your hot takes too? Because I would fail that test because they change. Yeah, hopefully we won't do a quarterly report on how our Big East standings looked preseason because, boy, were we way off. We're back next Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern time. Enjoy the games this weekend and catch the coaches. Mike Dub tomorrow night. That's going to be fun. I'm grabbing my popcorn. You Ed, like popcorn? Ed Cooley, appointment viewing. It'll be fun. Thanks for tuning in to Shoot Around. We're back next Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern.